From the beautiful Missouri Ozarks, it's PID Radio. Welcome. I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert, and welcome to our humble bunker, everybody. You know, uh, we had a massive storm here Mm -hmm. last night. We get big storms up here. Yeah. And uh, generally, it's just really high winds, Mm -hmm. lots of rain, and then it's gone. Yeah. But there are some people right now who are dealing with the after effects, and they've had trees down. We didn't have any of that this time. Uh, electricity out. Yep, we were spared that this time mm-hmm. as well. So. so for those of you who are dealing with the aftermath, we pray that the Lord will help you through it very quickly and with as little pain as possible. Right. Well, you, th- That's one of the things that surprised me about moving here from Illinois, because Illinois is not a cheap state in which to live. Our taxes were much higher, um, but our auto insurance, everything else was, was cheaper here. Mm-hmm. Real estate taxes, yeah. uh, everything. And we got here, and yet our auto insurance went up. It's like, wait, we're moving from a city, albeit a small one, mm-hmm. to a rural area. Why are why have our auto oh, insurance yeah. rates gone up? It was because, higher in Nebraska too. Yeah, because so of hail. hail. Yes, gang, gang, the hail's all here. Yes, it that, does so. fall here pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. But you know, it uh, that that's life. You deal with the elements, and mm-hmm. Derek and I like to look at the supernatural entities that might be behind some natural quote-unquote activities mm. or those who claim to be responsible for those things well exactly yeah, yeah. but we know that there are who some who are because we see in the yes. bible where the That's four true. angels of the four winds true, hold yes. them back yeah and um the company of destroying angels mm-hmm. mentioned in psalm 74 or 78 i forget which one anyway the condemnation of uh, or retelling mm-hmm. the story of egypt and how uh, the Lord destroyed the cattle of the Egyptians with hail and thunderbolts, mm-hmm. with barad and reshephim. Exactly, which sounds like storm god activity, which yep. means that the Lord either allowed it mm-hmm. or sent them because they are loyal to him. Right. We also get a picture of the angel standing in the sun. Yeah. Yeah, so some interesting things there. I mean, um, Angels described as stars. Th- this, th- this all is with God's doing. And of course, the, uh, re- record, the recording of these things in Scripture is under the direction of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So is that literally how the world works? Or was God just speaking to humans where they were? Well, I, I think you, probably a little of both. I, well, possibly. But I also think that the ancients may have had a better understanding of the way the world works than we do because we live in a de supernatural world. Well, a biblically mm-hmm. unsupernatural world. However, yes. it is a very, quote-unquote, spiritual world. You have a lot of people say, well, I'm very spiritual. Yeah, I'm well, not what religious. What does that mean? Yeah, it means I create the, a God in my own image. I, yes. I, I make up a God with the attributes that I can respect. Or, a God who meets my standards. Well, that takes us into <laughs> one of our first stories. And before we get to the stories, we want to remind you to download our app. That's right. If you're listening to this on YouTube, God bless you. Subscribe, share. But be aware that there will probably come a day when that free sandbox is closed to us for one reason or another. So uh, we will not be canceled from our own app. No, we will not. Christian Company runs that, and yep. they are very... Very friendly to all of our ministry, mm-hmm. their ministries. Also, there may sometime in the next six months or so be original content, app only content, app only content to encourage you to make the switch over to the app. Mm-hmm. That uh, is where you'll find all of our content. This podcast, of course, our weekly Bible study, which is really the most important thing we do. The Gilbert mm-hmm. House Fellowship, uh, unraveling Revelation, our ongoing study of the uh, prophecies of the end times, the view from the bunker. And uh, we're going back and we're working our way through 2006, the archives of PID Radio from 2006. Well, I know, and we've got a vault. There's a storage a drive that we have put all of those on, <laughs> and you and I are starting to discover the things that are on it. And there are some great interviews from back long ago. Yeah. Uh, I had not realized how much from 2006 was not on the PIDradio.com website, mm-hmm. much less anywhere else. So uh, just you may have to move that to a vault area of the app. Well, yeah, uh, th- there needs to be a better way of accessing because we've got so much content. I mean, if we put it all under one heading, okay, mm-hmm. PID Radio Classic. Okay, that's great. That's where, you know, where all of the pre-2020 episodes are located. But that's a lot of episodes. Yeah. And I was looking for, there, at, for a while there, we were doing programs every day. Five days a week, right. Yeah, well, yeah. 
So you, you go and you, you have to scroll, 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 scroll to get all the way down to 2005 and six. You but can anyway, search. You, you can search. Yes. I'm trying to make sure that every time there's an interview in there, the guest's name is tagged. So you can search by the guest name. And as we put new episodes up and I'll, I'll go back through unraveling revelation to try to do this with all of those episodes, tagging them with the relevant Bible verses, which I noticed, by the way, I hadn't realized this until yesterday. When you look in the Bible module, there's a Bible app inside the app, mm-hmm. which inside the Gilbert house TV, inside app. the Gilbert house app. Yeah. You can, uh, you've got your choice of uh, like five different translations. So if you like the King James, it's there. The ESV is there. Um, CSB is there, it's an but, audio it will all, but it's also an audio Bible. So you can have it read to you. But, but when you're looking at a specific chapter, it will link to the programs that have been tagged with those verses. Whoa. So, okay. So we're looking at Isaiah 14. Oh, and I see that they did this on unraveling revelation and Gilbert house fellowship. And so you can tap those and hear what we've done on those programs. So I'm going back through and Whoa. tagging. So this is all cross-linked inside the app. Thank you, Subsplash. Yeah. So, and God bless them because what they charge for this, and this is why so many ministries, both churches Mm -hmm. and media ministries, use this app. It's really reasonable. If we were to host all of this uh, media content on, say, Amazon's web servers. Oh, forget it. It it. It would cost us at least, based on what I had to price out for Skywatch TV, about eight times more than what we pay to Subsplash. Mm. And that, you know, for Amazon was just to host the video. Yeah. Subsplash does this and produces our app for mobile devices, iOS, Android, Amazon, Kindle Fire, plus Roku and Apple TV. Mm-hmm. And gives us a conversation area where you can go yeah. in and you can have, you can talk to other people. You can, there, there are various rooms, one for each program, mm-hmm. but also there's a prayer requests and announcements. Generally, we use the announcements to tell you where we're going or mm-hmm. something big that's going on here. But I've seen a couple of you use the announcements. That's fine. Right. Uh, we do want to encourage you, though, to be very... Very courteous while you're in these these rooms. Oh, because, absolutely. Sure. You know, imagine that you're in a gathering of believers, which you are, and that you are in the same physical space, which you are not. Mm, yeah. But imagine that you are. Therefore, would you behave the same way doing to others the way you would have others doing to you? Right. Um, think of the person first. Love others as you love yourself. Mm-hmm. So remember that when you're in the chat rooms. You guys have been really, really good about that. Yes. Just want to because long ago you and I hosted a forum that got a little testy. Yeah, it did, and we, we finally, finally shut it down because right. we didn't have time to go in and you moderate. Know. Yeah, yeah. All right, mom and dad are here. Enough of this. Over in the corner, you. Yeah, we we probably allowed people into that forum that shouldn't have been there. There was an occultist but, who was in there. Well, and he was really but, causing but, trouble. But we were PID Radio back in the day. We didn't. Yep. I'm, when the name was peering into darkness, it could be anything, couldn't it? And True. that was intentional. Yeah. Yes. That was intentional because we want those who need to hear the gospel but are following other voices, we want them to hear what right, Jesus right. has to say about all this. Yeah. And, and that is another reason I say this, that there's always possibility that someone who listens to PID radio will come into the chat room. So just remember that when you mm-hmm. are speaking to others. We are ambassadors of our kingdom, mm-hmm. uh, of the king and his kingdom. Exactly. Yeah. And there are a lot of various uh, ways to interpret scripture, so be courteous. Um, boy, the next story, the first story up, first story up. Yes. Is dun, 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 the egg theory. The egg theory. The egg theory. This is not um, differences of opinion on what should go into an egg salad. No, nor is it chicken and egg. Okay. Bizarre theorist, this is the headline. Bizarre theorist explains conspiracy theorist. Sorry. Conspiracy oh, theorist, yeah. Explains bizarre egg theory saying we are our own God. Now, of course, this is a TikTok. Uh-huh. TikTok, which is a very toxic TikToksic is what it ought to be called. <laughs> yes. Because seriously, there's a lot of really, really stupid stuff going on over there. And many young people are falling for these claims of ways to clean your face or cook something in your mm-hmm. or take clean something. And it's caused people to go into the hospital. Let's just put it that way. So mm-hmm. please be discerning. Sorry, my nose is dripping. Um, this has to do with a short story published in 2009 by Andy Weir. Oh, okay. Called, the guy who did The Martian. Yes. Yeah. Called The Egg. Mm-hmm. Maps out how the entire universe was created as an egg for the main character. 
who represented all of mankind, okay. all of humanity. And so this egg theory is that if you live long enough, you live every human life, then you essentially become God of this egg world. Uh. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a variation. Sorry if you keep hearing the rattling of my, my uh, tissue, but my, the right side of my nose is dripping. It's just one of those things. Really? Well, we're in balance then because my left, left side of my nose is dripping. Oh, uh, well, to see, we yeah. share the same brain. There you yeah. go. Um, this egg theory is a variation on the we live in a, we live in a digital world theory. Okay. That we are the main characters and everyone else is here as just non-role playing characters. I see. Non, NPCs. Non, NPCs. Non-playing characters. Non-playing yeah. characters. They're just here to make our world, flesh out our world. Uh-huh. That is contrary to everything we're taught in scripture and that yeah. is that everyone here is unique. Everyone here was you know, is, yeah. is created as an imager of God. Right. And it, the whole reason for love your neighbor as you love yourself is because that neighbor is not a non-playing character. Exactly. Your neighbor is just as important right. as you if are. If this really were a digital simulation and you were just in a, uh, a an MMORPG, a very mm-hmm. realistic one, and everyone else was an NPC, then you could do unto them whatever you want. It would be Westworld, where all of the... People you encounter are actually bots that mm-hmm. you could just, you know, do whatever to without any consequences. Yeah. That's the con- That's the logical end of the egg theory. It's terrible. And the fact that there are some who are getting all involved in this, it's, it's sort of a twist on the creepypasta idea that mm-hmm. someone who watches the video and believes it suddenly is terrified. Oh, or like the ring. Puffed up mm-hmm. like, hey, I am. I can do anything I want. There are individuals who are often these TikTokers that believe that they can do whatever they want to. They somehow subscribe to a variation of the egg theory. In other words, they are more important than anyone else. Therefore, right. they can do whatever they want to. Mm-hmm. And because of that, you have to be so judicious and, and discretionary. And that means in many ways. but uh, um, And discriminating and mm-hmm. discerning. So many disses in mm-hmm. there. Um, but if your kids, and many of them will, be going to TikTok, whether you know it or not, and in fact, there's probably a version of TikTok that's got a different name that everybody else is going to now because the adults don't know about it. Right. Boy, this, this guy, and this, this is a dangerous theory if you get mm-hmm. caught up in it, and to a teenager who doesn't uh, understand, or if they've not mm-hmm. been given a solid biblical foundation. Or if he's simply trying to get a lot of views and go viral. Because many of these social media sites, if you can prove that you have millions of views or imprints. Or clout. You get money. Yeah, clout, yep. But I'm saying the influence of impressionable teens who, because what he said, and this is again based on a short story by the novelist Andy Weir. uh, This this theory suggests that after enough time, after you have lived every human life ever, Mm -hmm. you will be born as a god. And so this guy who put this out on his TikTok channel said, once, uh, so the whole universe is just an egg. Now it's time for you to move on to your next life. Mm. Oh, okay. So if I speed up the process, I can get onto my next life and I can continue moving through faster to get to the end until I win the game and become a god. This is just a bizarre twist on Mormonism. Yes, kind of. At least for men. Yeah. And if you live a- according to the laws of Mormon, then right. you can. If you don't know what we're talking about, right. uh, the, the Mormons believe that eventually. If you live a righteous life, that you will be mm-hmm. when, when you die, you'll get your own planet. Right. If you're a man. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you women, call you your only one, get, yes, you, you only to, yeah, you only get into the afterlife if your husband, once he moves on, calls you. Calls your name. Calls your name. Oh yeah, say their name. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this this is bizarre. I mean, this sounds really silly and stupid, but don't underestimate the influence that TikTok has. I don't think it's coincidental that Chinese kids don't have access to TikTok. Their version of TikTok called Baude or something like mm-hmm. that is entirely different. Yes. It is propaganda by the Communist Party. It promotes patriotism and mm-hmm. hard work and being following rules, citizen. being good citizens. Here in the West, it's like encouraging people to do dangerous stunts for the purpose of attracting attention for clout on TikTok or any social media mm-hmm. site is 
corrosive to society. Yes, it as, is. As we've seen in the UK with that kid who keeps just walking into random strangers' homes and yeah, things. Yeah, well, he's not the only one. There are others. No, no, it's happening here in the US. We talked about that last week. Yeah. But, but I guess what we're really coming down to is that there are lots of dangerous theories out there. Be very discerning when you go online and talk to your kids and grandkids. Right. You know, ask them, just say, I heard this crazy thing called an egg theory. You ever hear that? And they, if they say, nah, don't know anything about it, then just Move let on. it. Yeah. And if they say, yeah, I, heard, I saw that. How do you know about that? It opens the door to conversation. Mm-hmm. Try to be aware of what's going on. It's not like you're trying to be a cool grandparent. It's just trying to be a shepherd. Right, right. Or a sheepdog. And, and this is where our churches, and, and really is us as parents and grandparents, it, it's on us to train up our children in the way we should go. We shouldn't you know, put this on Sunday school teachers or the youth group leader or whatever. We need to be teaching kids how they can know that the words in the Bible are true. Mm-hmm. And the evidence is there. Apologetics is something that really needs to be taught in every Christian church everywhere. When we look at the... The, the surveys a year after year from George Barna showing the trend is going in the wrong direction, that even people who claim to be born again Christians, uh, over 90% don't have a biblical worldview. And as Steve Bankars and Josh Peck wrote in their book, The Second Coming of the New Age, when you've got about 60% of professing Christians who hold some new age beliefs, mm. yeah. <laughs> it, it's clear we are creating a God in our own image because we don't read the Bible, most of us. We don't understand what's in it, and so we absorb a lot of our theology from the culture around us. And for kids, that culture is TikTok and Mm -hmm. Instagram and other social media sites we don't even know anything about. That is so true, and that's why we started PID Radio in the first place, which was originally called MythArc. Somebody recently said, hey, (laughs) I found an old MythArc radio back in the old days. Wow. I thought, oh yeah, we did that for about three weeks and then changed the name. I don't think we even have those files anymore. I don't think we've got uh, number one. I know where they are. Oh, we'll have to find that and put that on the classic app. I know, right? Um, Yeah, there's just so much stuff that we look into that is trying to see what the enemy is teaching our kids and grandkids. Mm -hmm. Derek and I have a real heart for that. And we've felt for a long time that it's our job to try to be, well, it's often talked about as being a watchman on the wall, but I, I think of it as being the barking dog. Yeah. Look, you want your dog to bark. When there's danger. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time, you want your dog to be, you know, just kind of there, hanging out with you, you know, enjoying being there as a family and this and that. But if there's ever danger, you want that dog barking and standing by your kids and snarling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's me. I am a dachshund. (laughs) (laughs) I won't snarl at you, honey. We, we We need a sign over the driveway, you know, as people enter, snarling dachshund ranch. I know. I Instead really of whispering ponies, which is so nice and gentle, so we snarling. Do you think dachshund. there's a coffee company that would make snarling dachshund coffee for I us? I don't know the snarling dachshund blend. I Ooh, think snarling yeah. block do, snarling <laughs> snarling dachshund blend is hard to say. Could be one of the scariest <laughs> blends you'd ever. But boy, would it wake you up? Oh yeah, bite you right in the ankle. Yeah, exactly. Boy, that'll wake you up. Whew. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the world, the world. Yeah. Well, you, you pointed me to a story this morning I was not aware of, uh, as long as we're talking about trends in the world. We noted last fall when the three red heifers were delivered to yes. Israel from Texas, but apparently one of them was now brought to uh, the site of ancient Shiloh, yes, or now, Shiloh, I should say. That, I find that fascinating because the tabernacle was there for, what, 400 years? 369, if I remember correctly. A long time. Right, right. It was there longer than the, uh, than the it, temple. Yeah, well, the temple, temple. It was built by Solomon around 930 BC and destroyed in 586. So it was a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah, it well, was roughly 400 years in both places. Yeah, that's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, no, you're right. It was actually there longer than the temple because 930 is like 30 years and then... Three three hundred thirty. Yeah, it was a li- slightly less time there so than, than in Shiloh. And then, and then. Yeah, math not my strong suit, not in my head anyway. Square root of. Uh, I used to be able to figure batting averages in my head. Oh, I, that doesn't surprise me yeah, at all. That but doesn't. Surprise that's me. important. I know exactly. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, the the fact that they are being taken there. If you've ever been to Israel with us, or you've gone with someone else, and you've gone to Shiloh, you know it's a beautiful park. Mm-hmm. 
and you get to walk up this nice, you know, gentle incline and past all of these archaeological ruins, and then you get to the top and you see what appears to be this imprint that is the same dimensions as the tabernacle. Right. Dr. Scott Stripling has been doing some excellent work there. He really has made a name for himself, and I, I know that's not why he went into this, but uh, to be able to do that work there and find a, a spot that matches the biblical dimensions of the tabernacle, and then also to be involved in finding that uh, lead curse tablet from the site of Joshua's altar. Yes, but also uh, he's helped to find three of the horns of the altar. Right, right. These are stones that have a natural horn on one color, on and, one corner. Yeah, because you can't work the You're stone of the them. altar. Right. Mm-hmm. It's really remarkable that they've got a, an openly Christian archaeologist who is mm-hmm. digging at a site that is so important in the history of Judaism. Uh, that really is a God thing. Isn't it? Because the Israeli Antiquities Authority is not always open to having evangelical Christians working on sites in Israel. True. And oddly enough, they're not always open to proving that Israel was in the land right. for as long as the Bible indicates. Yeah, we, we learned that from uh, Dr. Uh, Doug Petrovich, yeah, who said no, that really he had been part of the me. team at uh, Hatzor, yeah. which was destroyed by Joshua and then destroyed again uh, during the time of uh, the judges. And uh, Or am I getting that wrong? I know it was... It was Anyway, two destruction layers, but right. one of them was dated by, by Doug Petrovich to uh, the time of um, Joshua in the uh, late 14th century B.C., 15th century B.C. Yeah, and I think and it's, a, it's political. Yeah, yeah. Their leanings are just political. There's, there's a minimist, minimalist school of archaeology among Israeli archaeologists mm-hmm. who really would just assume the Bible, be, you know, like, well... Okay, sometimes it it proves to be accurate, but most of it's just a a fictional origin story for Mm. Israel. No, not really. And that that is a shame. Mm. But even even then, uh, just some of the most recent discoveries, we talked to Dr. Mike Freakman when we were in Israel. He's working at a site that, uh, his name I can't remember, but it was uh, in the vicinity of Beth Shemesh, southwest of Jerusalem. Oh, yes. On what would have been the border between the kingdom of Judah in the time of David and the Philistine territories. And the fact is, they dated it to the early 10th century BC, the time of David. And it's like, well, this is pretty clearly Israeli occupation or Jewish occupation back in the day. So it looks like there was a central government in the time of David, which means the kingdom of David must be real. So even some of the most prominent minimalists now uh, Mm -hmm. are, are saying, okay, I'm here to bury... There was a, a recent uh, archaeology conference where one of the minimalists said, I'm here to bury the minimalist school. Oh, that's a move yeah. in the right direction. Right, uh, yeah. Another story that just came out within the last week was that uh, five cities within the Davidic kingdom have been uh, named. They've been uh, excavated and, yes, and yes. it's believed now that these are five of his cities, proving that he had a kingdom. Right. And he didn't just one, rule a city. That's right. You, you, you found that story. That was reported at mm-hmm. uh, the Daily Mail. Yeah. Which... For all of the stuff on the right-hand column at the Daily Mail, it's a lot of which is a lot things, of yeah. But, but, but they really do find a lot of really good stories there, and they do better investigative journalism of the pol- politicians here in the U.S. than any of the U.S. corporate media. Oh, they do. I'm trying to see if I can find that story because I know I flagged it because I want to talk about it because you know archaeology is cool. Archaeology is cool. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Doctor Freakman had said if we uh, want next year because we are planning another early expedition before our Israel tour, he would be happy to show us that site. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. I've got to reconnect with him because they've been... Here we go. Oh. Uh, Five fortified ancient cities may be part of King David's lost kingdom. This was at Ancient Origins. It's been of an... Oh, Ancient Origins. Okay. Quite a number of sites. Let me me share that to you. I'm bringing it up now. Okay. Yeah. So I was looking at my uh, stuff from... uh, there we go. This was just posted uh, yesterday yep. at Ancient Origins. Um, yeah, the academic paper was at the Jerusalem Journal of Archaeology. So mm-hmm. Ancient Origins, great site. If you want to read, many times they will only allow you to read the entire article if you pay a small subscription fee. Mm-hmm. Um, Derek and I pay it just so we can read them all. But uh, some of the articles, you can read the whole thing. Yeah. 
not a Christian site, no. but a lot of this stuff here is, uh, the, the academic rigor is fairly good. You just have to be discerning. Uh, the city that I was trying to think of, Kerbet Kayafa. Ah. Q-E-I-Y-A-F-A. Oh, yeah. Kerbet Kayafa. And uh, it is a site that, um, yeah, they've been working at for some time, and they had to uh, determine whether it was Judahite or Canaanite or Philistine, and they've determined it did belong to the kingdom of Judah, which that far from Jerusalem suggests that there was a strong central government at the time. This is essentially a military site. Oh, on absolutely. The Take a look at the walls. They are yeah. substantial. Uh huh. The fact that they look this good <laughs> all these years later. 3,000 years later. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's remarkable. So, yeah, we, we definitely want to get with uh, Dr. Mike Freakman again. In fact, he reached out to me. He's got a uh, dig site where he's looking for volunteers. Ooh, is and this so the wall that goes around this big circular area? In the o- overhead shot? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, kind of a hilltop uh, redoubt fortress. You know, that was a really good, it continues today. If you want to, you know, keep people from storming your city, mm-hmm. have some sort of a natural barrier, either a river or a hill. Take the high ground, right? Yep. Make mm-hmm. them charge up the hill toward mm-hmm. you. It's a little more difficult. It's a disadvantage. And you can, right. you know. Heavier arrows and pick them off. Mm-hmm. That's why you find so many hill forts in ancient uh, ancient England, Scotland, Wales. Mm. Um, so b- back to the red heifers, though. There are three of them. One in particular was brought there uh, recently. The other two are going to be brought to the Research and Visitor Center yes. at Shiloh. So maybe we can see them when we go back there next year. Now they're. I hope we can, but I also pray that they are, and I'm sure they are keeping them under guard because. Oh yeah. This is a temptation to those who do not want ever to see those heifers, any of them, mm-hmm. have a chance of being turned into the ashes so that you can cleanse the uh, Kohanim, mm-hmm. the high priest and all the, that. Right. They need to purify the Kohanim, mm-hmm. but also the site. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I remember numbers, I'm going to look up numbers 19 really quickly. I think a lot of the, uh, the rules as far as how they are to be prepared is later addition by um, rabbis. I don't think it's in numbers chapter 19, which is kind of a vague... Uh, let's see, a red heifer without defect in which there is no blemish and on which a yoke has never come. You shall give it to Eleazar the priest. It shall be taken outside the camp and slaughtered before him. And Eleazar the priest shall take some of its blood with his finger, sprinkle some of its blood toward the front of the tent of meeting seven times. And uh, then it goes on from there, but it doesn't say mm-hmm. anything else really. Well, um, that that's true. And you're right. There are other laws that, that have been added. Mm-hmm. You and I are going to see Aaron Lipkin in a very short time, on the 25th, down at Blue Eye. just over a week. Exactly. And so while we are down there, we can ask him if he thinks that while we're at Shiloh, if the the heifer or heifers will be available for us to at least see. I'd be happy to see them from a distance, like through, you know, glass or something, so that I want them protected. Yeah. The question is when the red heifer is supposed to be sacrificed because i think it's got to be less than three years old. less than three years old which means if they're already 20, two. 22 months old by the time we get back there yeah boy that could be interesting we could be there at a very interesting time yes Ooh, boy want to go with us <laughs> march boy. of 2024 yeah that that is going to be interesting well we'll take a we, we will ask Aaron Lipkin about that next week, and that uh, should make for some very interesting times uh, in Israel next year. Because you're right, I think there are those who uh, would want to make sure that those could not be used in any kind of a purification ritual. No, yeah. exactly. Well, well, we'll pray for that because yes. I know that, uh, boy, signs of the times. Yeah. Well, coming up, I uh, want to talk about uh, a new global financing pact. Oh, yeah. yeah, the people who have all the monies want to know, want to, want to basically decide how the rest of us are supposed to live. That and more as PID Radio continues straight ahead. Space is not the final frontier, but there are those who want you to think it is. 75 years ago, something crashed in the desert near Roswell, New Mexico. An industry has grown up to sell the idea that the pilots were extraterrestrials. We want you to know the truth. For a limited time, we're making available a special offer featuring the groundbreaking book, The Day the Earth Stands Still. 
This book shows step-by-step how the occult teachings of Madame Blavatsky and Aleister Crowley grew into the ancient aliens hypothesis of the modern UFO movement. It's our Gilbert House Roswell special. For just $35, we'll send you The Day the Earth Stands Still, plus our DVD sets, The Best of Sci Friday, Volumes 1 and 2. It's a $65 value for just $35. Take advantage of the Gilbert House Roswell Special for a limited time only, and you'll only find it at our store, online at gilberthouse.org. Welcome back to PID Radio. I'm Derek Gilbert. <laughs> I'm Sharon Gilbert, and we're just so glad that you are out there listening to these crazy talks. <laughs> um, and again, crazy times. download the app if you want to get everything and make sure you never lose an episode. Also, uh, we want to thank all, all of you. Many, many of you have been helping financially with Build Barn Better, but you've all been praying. And yes. We really, really appreciate your prayers. Every dime we're trying to be good stewards with, but those prayers, they are uplifting us and encouraging us and as look if you're living in the northern latitudes you know it's summertime Mm -hmm. and right here in the ozarks it's next to 100 degrees almost every day with Mm -hmm. the exception of the storm last night which cooled it off but uh, we've got the barn uh, floor going in that well but being finished yes the improved next big step coming this week as the a day when it's going to be 101 degrees <clears throat> yeah that's the forecast that yeah. they will be out there grinding off the top layer of the floor and then applying the epoxy coating yep so pray for these young men because we want to you know they're veterans they're great guys we mm-hmm. want to pray that they uh have plenty of water we'll get out there and try to make sure that they're as comfortable as possible but they try to get it all done in one day yeah so the barn is cleaned out it is ready for them and that will be the, as, as we begin working essentially from the bottom up, I suppose, because once we do that, then they'll come in there and uh, uh, Christ powered construction will come in and mm-hmm. do the electric, replace those windows, get the remnants of the, the bat insulation out of there. And, uh, and bat or bat? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> those bats, they just, they, they're not very good at insulating. No, they aren't. Uh, they, they, yeah. Why would birds want to nest in fiberglass? I just don't understand that. Anyway, that uh, and then finally, uh, the the HVAC put in there the insulation, uh, the spray insulation, and mm-hmm. then uh, the HVAC system. Right. So uh, and they were insulating the garage door. There's a big oh uh, yeah 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 overhead door that uh, goes up and down, of course, to allow big trucks to go in if they choose. But we're not going to be allowing a whole lot of big trucks to go in on the nice no. new floor. So we're going to insulate that door and. That way, if we ever, anybody else ever lives on this property and they want to use that door and they mm-hmm. want to go in there and make it a man cave or whatever, then, you know, they can do that. Yeah. We're not going to take the door out. So you can see some uh, uh, photos of the progress, the, the, the barn before and the way it is now, mm-hmm. mostly empty, at uh, gilberthouse.org slash donate. And uh, we thank you for your support. Oh, we because do. it is this would be impossible if we were just trying to do this it truly would be yeah the barn is generally alone. in my morning photos by the way my dawn pictures oh yeah i get out there usually five five to five fifteen or so because i have to feed the hummingbirds i kid you not they wake up and the minute the sun strikes them they are awake and so they're they're out here five twenty five or so and they can't find empty feeders they need that and sugar rush really quickly. Yeah, yeah. And they, they kind of like hover in front of the door. Hey. They do. They hey. panic. You'll see them all flying around, you know, the hooks where they're either an empty feeder or no feeder at all. Because mm-hmm. last night we brought them all in. I emptied them and just rewashed and washed them all up because we figured they would blow along in the 90 mile per hour wind. Uh-huh. They would have. Yeah, yeah. So they were... uh just a little panicky this morning, but mm-hmm. you got up. So the day has been saved. And the day has been saved. Repay us by taking care of the mosquitoes out here. So we very rarely get bit by mosquitoes. And a lot of They're that I'm them. convinced is that it's the, the uh, yeah. hummingbirds taking care of that stuff. By the way, I've been asked how I make the hummingbird nectar. Oh, yeah. It is four parts cane sugar. Mm-hmm. I don't use anything other than cane sugar. I just like to know where it came from. To make sure it isn't something else that's just been dehydrated and turned into sugar. Mm-hmm. I like cane sugar. Beet sugar is good too. But anyway, cane sugar you can get pretty easily at the supermarket. And uh, four parts of that to, sorry, sorry, one part sugar to four parts water. 
So one uh, cup of sugar <laughs> to four cups of water. Boy, Don't the other do way, it the other way around. <laughs> yeah. Do that the only sludge. if you want to attract lots of bees. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is one cup of cane sugar to four cups of nice, clean water. Yeah. Um, I also add a little bit of capful of vanilla to that mix. I make it by the gallon. Mm-hmm. They go through it pretty fast. They do. Once they find your feeders, mm. boy, howdy. Especially when sundown comes, this last call. Yeah. And I think putting <laughs> the vanilla in there must make it taste a little more like a natural flower. But they yeah. love it. And real vanilla, not imitation vanilla. Right. Real vanilla. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. That's the recipe. No red food coloring. Don't put that in there. No, I please so- don't. Yeah. That can actually harm them. Right. And, uh, and don't again, ever it- use... Anything other than actual granulated sugar, real cane sugar, or something that you know is granulated white sugar. Because mm-hmm. if you put in brown sugar or honey-based sugar or anything, guava-based sugar, any of that stuff, it can make their tongue swell. Yeah. Yeah. And they Which suddenly starve to death. Yeah. Their beaks are really, really, mm. really small. Yeah. So you don't want them getting into trouble. Yep. So yep. anyway, that's, that's yep. the secret. That's the secret. It's the winning formula. Well, uh, at the end of June, just two weeks ago, a little meeting took place in Paris that kind of slipped past the radar, but it's worth noting because of some of the attendees. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, U.S. Secretary of the Treasury Janet Yellen, Managing Director of the IMF Kristalina Georgieva, World Bank, World Bank President A.J. Banga, and a number of other bankers who... Uh, were there to um, ostensibly, which means this is what they're saying yeah, they were there to do. That's why we're here. Find financial solutions to tackle the goals or to tackle poverty, financial solutions to poverty while simultaneously curbing planet heating emissions. Hmm. In other words, climate change is now, in their minds, inextricably, inextricably, inextricably linked. Yes, I used to be able to say that inextricably linked to uh, international finance. Climate change and finance are linked, yoked at the neck, chained together. And what this means really is... Climate change and pandemics were the two-pronged approach of the World Economic Forum. You got it in Mm -hmm. one. Hashtag Great Reset. Mm -hmm. That's that, that, that's what this is all about. That's what it's all about. Well, that this is being tried by a number of countries. The West are doing it one way. In the past, there's been a World Bank that's starting to use the ESG rules to uh, tell people how to live their lives. China has their own. And in fact, there's a an organization that just went into uh, the UK. Mm-hmm. The Asian uh, Investment Infrastructure Investment Bank. Yeah. The AIIB. Yeah. Well, apparently... Finally, the UK members of their board caught on and realized, hey, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. These are all communists. Yeah. The, uh, glo- their director of global, um, uh, what was it, Com- communications, mm-hmm. ba- basically their, their PR guy. Yes. Who was a Brit, said he realized suddenly the board of directors was all a bunch of communists. And I don't see how my nation's interests are served by my being part of this board. No. But former PM David Cameron. Yep. Was, you'd think you'd have known better, but yeah. a lot of uh, elite capture was going on. And the West, uh, the China uh, government, Chinese government are doing that all over the world. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we've got the World Economic Forum working through Yellen and many others who are forming these new government bodies mm-hmm. to tell us how to live our lives. Right, right. In, in a sense, in, essentially, this this meeting in, in Paris, which was called the Summit for a New Global Financing Pact, uh, and Emmanuel Macron, who sees himself as mm-hmm. a new Gallic, you know, the new Gallic hero, like Charles de Gaulle, uh, said that we need a new, uh, a, a finance shock to jolt the world into a new, more equitable system of Wealth redistribution Macron is what it's really about. is no about. Charles de Gaulle. He is not. He, he was booed, actually, at a... It's like a, saying a, a Rishi Sunak is football uh, Winston match Churchill. Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. We don't have anyone of that stature today. Sadly, there are guys who have that kind of gravitas, but they're running China and Russia right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, this, this global gathering of western financial elites is all about national wealth taxation and wealth redistribution Mm -hmm. they want to impose on the rest of us the international monetary fund and the world bank 
as the mediators of global funds taxing the wealthy nations using the IMF's special drawing rights basket of currencies as a global currency umbrella. And then when we have a massive economic meltdown, they will impose central bank digital currencies on us all so that we were all then forced to use getting rid of cash and forcing us to use electronic currency instead. I'm, I'm looking up trying to see the story that I gave to you the other day about uh, the world total world debt compared to GDP. Oh, <laughs> uh, it is an inverted pyramid. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the, the global debt is way beyond gross it's, domestic product. It, it's something like 369%, I don't have it in front of me, right. of the GDP. So a whole lot of, oh, here it is. Global debt, this was in, uh, as of January 13th of this year, global debt has had a, hun- a record $300 trillion, mm-hmm. or 349%, sorry, not 69, 349% leverage on gross domestic product. That translates to a debt of $37,500 debt for each person in the world. Oh, okay. Can we just write him a check and yeah. be done with it? Yeah. The GDP <laughs> per capita is only 12000 Mm-hmm. So I make $12,000, but I owe thirty-seven five. Yeah. Well, if you're in a government uh, office, a, a minister or a bureaucrat of some sort, you say, well, we'll just print more. Mm-hmm. And That's how we got add, where we are. Yeah. And if it's electronic, well, we'll just add another zero to that, uh, that file and hit save. Mm-hmm. Boom. Problem solved. No, that's not how it problem works. Problem is not solved, and sadly, no. if you are really, you know, if you are depending upon a digital currency to save your future, mm-hmm. it won't happen. Mm-hmm. There will be the elites. It will be, as you say, an inverted pyramid. Well, it will be. It will be a pyramid. Yeah, not inverted. It will be a pyramid because those who are in control right, will right. be at the very top, and the rest of us. There won't even be a middle class. It'll be a pyramid with a big thing on top, and then a whole big blank area, and then the rest of us at the bottom. Yeah. Destruction of the middle class is a key aspect of the Great Reset Uh because we're a problem. As long as we're reasonably comfortable and self-sufficient, we resent and resist government telling us what to do. But if we are dependent on government handouts, like, you know, the guinea pig who who has to go to the little water bottle there and keep, you know, I've got, can't go too far away from my water bottle because the water bottle is what keeps me alive. Mm -hmm. That that's kind of where they would. The situation in which they would have us, and if we're dependent on our CBDC uh, for all of our financial assets, our liquid assets, you know, being able to go and buy groceries, Mm -hmm. uh, where all of our transactions run through a central bank that knows what we're buying and where we're buying it, and has the power to, just with a few keystrokes, stop us from buying and selling. Or debank you and you're or no debanking us all entirely. You're right. That's a big thing going on in, mm-hmm. in England right now. As uh, the uh, former MP and uh, uh, the guy who really pushed Brexit through mm-hmm. got the public rally behind the uh, the Brexit cause. Nigel Farage. Uh, he's he's found that like ten banks out there. You know, his his existing bank just canceled him without any reason, and now nine other banks have said, "No, we don't want your business." Like really? Mm-hmm. And now, the, as the story has become a bigger deal over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we we watch Nigel's show on GB News. Mm-hmm. Love that channel. Oh, actually. I, lo- I do. I love his show too. I just yeah. I, everybody on there is so good. We would love to just go and hang out with Nigel Farage and and Jacob Rees-Mogg. Mm-hmm. Love his program as well. He's just such a dry, dry humor and very very witty. Um, but all of the presenters. Yeah, on you can channel. get the app. Yeah. So if you have a Roku TV or a you know a Kindle Fire, I'm not a Kindle Fire, but an Amazon Fire stick or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you can get the app on that too. But you can also get it on your mobile device. Right. So uh, they they take a, a kind of a contrarian view to what the established media in the UK presents. They don't toe the line of BBC, uh, ITV, Sky News. Mm-hmm. And uh, in fact, it was a huge shock to the, uh, the, the, the corporate media in the UK when Farage was named the news presenter of the year. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was booed at the Trick Awards. Voted by the people. Voted by the this people. This wasn't the insiders. It was the people, the yeah. audience that voted. Yeah. So the banking establishment wanted to punish Farage, apparently, for pushing through Brexit. Yeah. 
and really getting the public public support rallied behind that idea, and which for is having what, a voice and for having a voice. But I think they overplayed their hand. Yeah. Sort of like the media elites here in the U.S. wanting to cancel Tucker Carlson or, mm-hmm. or Glenn Beck. If you want to go back a little mm-hmm. farther than that, Beck has built his own successful media company. Tucker Carlson now reportedly doing the same thing. Nigel Farage is basically taken to the platform he's got on GB News, which is now drawing more viewers than BBC News or Sky mm-hmm. or um, ITV. ITV. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's it's becoming a real scandal over there in the UK. It's like, yeah, other people are stepping up and saying, yeah, they canceled me without any warning, too. I was given like 30 days to get my funds out and take it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, if, if you don't have that kind of voice, they can do that to you. You know what I but, love about uh, watching uh, GB News and, and just watching... Um, British or European news in, in general is that if all you watch are American sources, U.S. sources, you're going to get a very, very slanted viewpoint because they're trying to convince us that the play is going this way, the movie is running this way. Right, right. But, but if you watch over there, you'll see the rest of the world. Yeah. You'll see, because England is still a big player in NATO, and England is still a big- And the world of finance. And the world of finance. In fact, London is still the beating heart of world finance. Mm -hmm. The financial center there is bigger and more important than New York, no matter what New York wants to believe. Yeah. So it's uh, that's an interesting story there, but it, it, it points out the- danger posed by central bank digital currencies Mm -hmm. because in the case of nigel farage and and the other people who have been debanked they still have physical cash ostensibly in bank vaults and the Mm -hmm. bank says okay come get your money and go take it somewhere else if it's in a digital form all they have to do is say sorry your account's closed you can't do anything Mm -hmm. like uh, why do i can't take my digits home yeah yeah what, what do you do with that? And to that end, GB News has started an online petition to, um, to preserve the use of physical currency, cash. There is a drive that's been ongoing and it's picking up speed to kill cash. We, we keep seeing this drumbeat, you know. Mm-hmm. We, it, in fact, in the EU, they stopped printing 500 euro notes because the claim, and we've seen that here in the U.S. with $100 bills, is that the mm-hmm. only people who use large denomination currency are... Uh, drug dealers, human traffickers, terrorists, and tax cheats. Which, strangely enough, was the excuse used by these banks because they say he's a politically exposed person, a right. pep. Yep. And therefore, those kind of individuals... One of the pep boys. Uh, yeah, he is. <laughs> Manny, Moe, and Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> the, the idea of pep means that you could be uh, influenced by... Uh, outside countries you could, right. because you're usually a politician or the family of a politician or someone like that. But also it's to uh, examine the use of your account regarding possible lo- money laundering. Mm-hmm. And, and that's essentially and the, and the, the law over there right now is if you have a, a, an inkling that money laundering or a pep person has is, is somehow involved in your bank, you close the account. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't close the account, you can be fined. Yeah. You have no penalty if you close an account and shouldn't be. Right, right. So the banks are minimizing their risk. exposure and their risk by just saying, okay, well, you're, you're at, you could possibly be one of these at people. Least so ex- we're just, that's, that's the, the excuse. excuse. That is the excuse. That's the reason they're giving. So, so yeah, the world is moving very, very closely. Not only do we have three red heifers that possibly mm-hmm. will be one of the ones needed, we're moving very closely prophetically to uh, the end of all things um and and just very quickly to throw this in uh according to the internet the bank of international settlements which is the bank that uh, reconciles transactions between uh banks in different countries they say that there may be as many as two dozen active central bank digital currencies by the end of this decade and they're eventually all going to merge yeah, they they will yes they they will come into one conglomo bank Mm -hmm. uh, probably under the imf's special drawing rights Mm -hmm. but um well, under whatever 93%, country is running. The well, world yeah, whoever's point. running the SDR, and, and the question there is how they're going to be able to do this because we in the West think that uh, the World Economic Forum or whatever is going to control the world. Well, the Chinese and the Russians and the Indians have something to say about the, the mm-hmm. BRICS nations. They're planning to launch their old their own gold-backed currency this fall. Right. So there is a bifurcation of the global economy taking mm-hmm. place as um, 
the rest of the world is looking at how the Biden administration and even the Trump administration before it has weaponized dollars against uh, nations that don't follow Washington's line. It's like, we, we don't want that kind of exposure. We, want, we don't want the neocons telling us what to do. It's the effect in our material space of the spiritual warfare taking place yeah. in the unseen realm. Mm -hmm. These entities are all vying for who gets to be. It's like musical chairs, musical warfare. When the, the war stops, who is without a chair? Mm -hmm. Then you take away another throne. And then it's, me, me, okay, who gets to be on the throne when mm -hmm. there's only one left? Yeah, that day is coming. But yes, uh, prophetically speaking, also prophetically speaking, I've been watching what's going on in the sun. Oh. Yeah, I mm. mentioned the angel in the sun earlier. I don't know how like that Jerry, relates. Was it Jerry and the Pacemakers? I follow the sun? Don't let the sun catch you crying. Yeah, that was that was another one. There's another song I'm I'll thinking. I'll follow of. the sun. That's Beatles. I'll follow the sun by. Yes, you're right. The Beatles, yeah. Jerry and the Pacemakers. Don't let the sun catch you crying. Right. Okay. I grew up in the '60s. <laughs> I defer. <laughs> defer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, anyway, so yes. Um, the, I, I pay attention to what's going on in the sun because I think that, well, first of all, that is really what's causing a lot of the climate change going on right now. We are in a very, very active solar cycle, mm -hmm. and it is just about to peak. And in fact, it is thought by scientists who know, not the science, but actual scientists who pay attention, ah. who, uh, who they believe that it's going to peak in spring of 2025. A lot of things are happening, or sometime in 2025, yeah. probably spring, but it's, it's it's extremely warm right now, isn't it? Yeah. It's been getting warmer and warmer. The sun works in 22-year cycles, that it goes up for 11 years and then goes down for 11 years. And so it goes from solar minimum to solar maximum. It's just about to reach solar maximum. Mm-hmm. So you're saying the sun has more impact on global warming than our Honda? Oh, even more than the cattle next door. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's, that's not according to the science trademark. I know, the science doesn't uh, say that. You have to be watched. I didn't know. Yeah, but, but signs in the sun and the moon. That's hmm. biblical, watching hmm. for signs in the sun and the moon. So the fact that lots of uh, solar radiation, uh, gamma rays, there are all sorts of, uh, um, not, I had to ask you this word earlier because the noun is just escaping me again. <laughs> the solar storms caused by these. Flares. Solar flares. Thank you very much. Flare Belches. Pens. Yeah. <laughs> the sun is belching. Solar Stop burps. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think a mua mua? Is, is to blame for this stuff? Probably, yes. Probably. Don't forget that if you've forgotten about Imuamua, it's that cigar-shaped thing yeah, that kinda, was crossing in front of the sun back, what, oh, five, six years ago? Yeah, seven kind of flew through the... Uh, Early days of Cy Friday, I know that. Yeah, it was an interstellar object detected by, the, uh, by, by observers. The first interstellar object known or at least detected, to pass through the solar system. The system was spotted back in 2017. Yeah. There was a solar storm back in 2000 called the Bastille Day oh. event. So June 14th, July 14th of, 20, of 2000. July what 14th, was that 15th? solar storm back in the 1860s? The Carrington the, event. The Carrington event, yeah. yes. That would have, if the Carrington event hit today, Mm-hmm. Wherever, whatever part of Earth was in its path would lose infrastructure, would lose internet, would mm -hmm. lose electricity, would lose the ability to bank. Yeah. Central bank digital currency, if all the electronics get fried, it's like, oh, there we go. Great. Again, 20, Great reset. 25. Yeah, yeah. Look for it. We've got just a little bit of time, and I want to tell you that if you're concerned, what do I do? Do, do these things. To the extent that you can, pay off your debts. Mm -hmm. To the extent that you can, have tangible assets. Right, right. Food, water, clothing, 
printed books, Bibles. Mm -hmm. Um, To the extent that you can, try to prepare your home to live without cash, without access to a bank if you have to. That's why getting out of debt so they can't come and say, your home is forfeit. That, that's out of the reach of most of us. I understand that. Yeah. I do understand that. Oh, yeah. But the truth is, and Derek and I are both pre-trib, and uh, we can have that discussion another time, but you can watch early episodes of Unraveling Revelation where we talk about the, the, the writers of uh, Chapter 6 in the book of Revelation. But uh, we are indeed pre-trib believers, mm-hmm. but we understand Jesus Christ is actually in control of these things. Yes. And he's not going to come and ask us, is it okay if I come back now? Okay. Do, you th- <laughs> yeah. do you think it's okay? Because I, I know your chart says yeah. this. I don't want to mess up your chart. Yeah, don't want to offend anyone. No. Want to be, you know, Trust me. inclusive. He gets to choose. And so <laughs> right. however he yeah. chooses to do this, if Derek and I are here and things really go bad with banking and they go bad here in the United States, which it may. Yeah. It may be before the tribulation period hits. I don't know. But the day is coming if you claim Christ as your Savior that uh, those at the top of the pyramid mm-hmm. won't like you very much. Yeah. They're, even though we're pre-trip believers, mm-hmm. we, we do not expect things to be easy. We don't expect that we're going to get out of here before things get rough. And no. so being prepared just makes sense long-term food not necessarily you know the freeze-dried food buckets although we've got a couple of those if you can afford those get them yeah but you know things that have long shelf storage like rice or beans or whatever things that you can in fact was talking to a friend in michigan last night says he's probably got about five years worth of food Mm -hmm. and most of it is stuff that is canned or just long-term shelf storage and, you can just, and they recycle things out right they can use things exactly. off the front of the shelf as they replenish on the back of the Canned shelf things are a really good idea because you don't have to cook them with water you don't have to have a heat source and you don't have to have water right and many times there's liquid in them so that mm-hmm. if you have to you can drink that liquid um but yeah well, another thing is get a charcoal grill yeah and, and stock up on some charcoal mm-hmm. so you can uh, you know, have a heating source if need be Although you don't want to do that indoors, but I mean, a, a heat source to cook your food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can always just set up a campfire, but, yeah. you know, yeah. having, have ways to uh, uh, filter water. Yeah. And that's good to have anyway. A lot of these things are really good to have anyway. Mm-hmm. Have uh, ways to charge your phone if you want to keep it charged. Right. Solar. Assuming that there's anything on your phone that you'll be able to access later if the infrastructure goes down. Solar radios, mm-hmm. solar um Lights are really good. Last night when it was storming, Derek and I, we both got out our solar uh, lamps and, and I put one by, our, by my side of the bed and I mm-hmm. think you had one over on your side so that if yep. it, we woke up in the middle of the night and realized, you know what, the ceiling fan's off. Yeah. Okay. Power's All right. Yeah. Now let's go see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, also helps I can, you know, look out in the front yard, make sure, okay, that noise. All right. That, yeah. That's just fat, fat Eddie the raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it, it sounds overwhelming if you're if you're starting from scratch. We we've done programs on this in the past. There are others who are much more informative when it comes yeah. to prepping than than we are. So we encourage you to check those out. But the yeah. bottom line is, you don't have to do it all at once. I mean, it sounds overwhelming. I don't know where to start. Well, start with one small thing and just build it up over time. Next time you're at the dollar store or someplace like that, get one of those big bags of rice. Mm-hmm. Get a bag of beans or two. Yeah. And then each time you're in there, get something else. Yeah. Derek and I stocked up just by, I signed up for subscribe and save on Amazon. Beans and rice were coming every month. Mm-hmm. We have lots of beans we and rice. We yep. have lots of them. Yep. Bisquick. So, oh yeah, that comes too. And that's mm-hmm. pretty, that's easy. That's easy to right. punch things up. Mm-hmm. Um, dried soup mixes, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that, and, and spices, salt. Oh yeah. Yeah. You definitely want salt. Salt, toilet paper. Yeah, yes. That will be the coin of the realm yep. after things really break down. Coffee. Coffee. Mm-hmm. Yes. Snarling ducks and coffee <laughs> would be such a great it coffee. Would be. Um, Bite you in the ankles. Two, two other things I want to get to before the, the end here. One really quick. I was talking to Brian Melvin the other night. Uh, I was a guest on his program, uh, The Christian Marauder, which is oh, available yeah. from mm-hmm. The Daily Renegade. And uh, I'll be talking to Josh Peck and um, Zach Drew about their new partnership good in the daily renegade here in, in the weeks ahead oh, good uh josh and christina if you weren't aware have relocated from our area here in the ozarks to decatur illinois to partner up with zach drew 
And that's going to be really, really amazing because Zach, Josh, Christina individually are amazing people, but together it will be incredible. And Josh's venture, the Daily Renegade, which had um, he'd gotten really busy, and so it didn't. It really hasn't developed as as he would have liked. I think um, Brian Melvin's been contributing um, to the Daily Renegade on a regular basis. He, I interviewed him on a View from the Bunker some time back, and I'm going to have him back. Uh, because his story, number one, is remarkable. He was, he, he died, basically. But he didn't go to the good place. He saw the other place. Mm. And there are people who hear his story and be skeptical, but the, the evidence is in the fruit of his life since then, where he now proudly, boldly proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ and warns people. He, he's like the, the man in the vision of, you know, the, the rich man and Lazarus. Let me come back and warn my brothers. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, that's kind of what he's doing. He's come back and he is warning everybody, hey, you don't want to go into eternity on the wrong side of history, except mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. And his. anyway, he was telling me he's been doing research into the theosophical teachings of uh, Helena Blavatsky, oh. and Alice Bailey, mm-hmm. and Alice Bailey. I didn't know this, but Alice Bailey, who took and developed um, Blavatsky's teachings, believed that the second coming of the cosmic Christ, Maitreya, yes. would appear in or shortly after 2025. Oh, no, so, I wasn't aware of that. I know that she'd been looking for Maitreya. Yeah. Um, this is uh, available, actually, at the website of the organization that she mm-hmm. set up, which was originally called Lucifer Trust. They changed it because people were like, wait a minute, hold on, are you the baddies? It's still Lucas Trust. It's Yeah, Lucas Trust, L-U-C-I-S, L-U-C-I-S or... Lucas or Lucis, whatever, but you can find all of her writings available right there on the website. Just do a search through her published books for 2025, and you'll see all these references to that year. So I'm going to have Brian on to talk about that because he's done a lot of research into it. Well, there have been a lot of uh, predictions by various you know, organizations, various religions, various beliefs, various people groups, saying that 2025 is an important year. 2025, yep. in fact, uh, sort of comes up in the Wormwood Prophecy. Mm-hmm. It's 2029 when it's actually supposed to if, come back through. If Wormwood if, is if, asteroid Apophis. If right. it is, well, that's thought that Apophis may make a close swing past Earth in mm-hmm. 2029, April 13th of 2029. Very close. And if you back up six months. Three years and six months. Three years and six months, sorry. It's October of 2025. Yeah. The seventh day of the uh, festival, the Feast of Tabernacles. Yeah, pretty important. Right. And uh, 2029, it would be seven days after Passover, mm-hmm. which was the day the walls of Jericho fell down. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. That's really, oh, we um, don't have time to talk about all that. No, we don't. But uh, I do want to touch on one other thing, just sort of a kicker, because it, it is so... You're like, you know, Steve Jobs. Oh, one, one more, more thing. thing. Yeah, it, because it's kind of comical. It, it, it is, and you have to laugh at it, because otherwise you start throwing things at your television set. Apparently, the Keystone cops now in, are in charge of security at the White House. The White House, one commentator said tongue in cheek, is the safest crack house in the United States. It's the one place you know you can go and do coke and police will be like, what happened? Okay, oh, I'll had- say it again. CCTV. You yeah. know they had security cameras in that part of the White House, probably throughout the White House. Right. But for goodness sake, yes, there. Yeah, if you're not familiar with the story, back the first weekend of July, there on it was the Sunday, July fifth, or or something, whatever it was that that first Sunday, it would be uh, the sixteenth, yeah, the second, around that, second okay. of July, they they evacuated the White House because they found a, a mysterious substance with a white powder mm-hmm. in it, and they're thinking, oh, this could be anthrax. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it's cocaine hydrochloride. Okay, well, it was found in a public area. It could be anybody. We have no. Well, wait, okay, well, wait, no. all right, now it was found in a library, which is still oh, kind of open to wait, the public. No, it was like, no. oh, wait, oh, no, it was actually in a secure area close to the Situation Room. Yes, So exactly. Uh, yeah, this is a secure area, only accessible to White House staff, yep. which maybe you've got 100 people, 150 people, tops, who had access to this, but come on, come on. This is the most heavily surveilled, uh, most secure building on the earth Nope, FBI. They've they, we looked. We we, we took, looked everywhere. We took the baggie. We dusted it for print. No physical evidence. The There's se- just nothing. The Secret Service this past week briefed Congress and said, "Sorry, we're closing our investigation. We've not been able to identify a suspect. We have no idea." 
Well, I, 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 but here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. A publication called um, Soldier of Fortune. Oh, yes. Uh, tweeted out that uh, they, in fact, have been told by a trusted source inside the White House that the Secret Service does know who it is. Well, of course they do. Less than 24 hours after Soldier of Fortune went public with this information, saying our sources have told us they know who this is. That's when the Secret Service suddenly contacted Congress and said, okay, we need to have a a, a, a briefing to tell you that we don't know who it is. (laughs) Because until that time, the the Secret Service was kind of stonewalling. No, investigation is ongoing. And the story kept changing. Yeah. and it. it, But no, Soldier of Fortune magazine reported that... uh, Fingerprints were found on the cocaine bag. This is reported by Susan Katz Keating at SOF. Now, again, the, the title sounds like a pulp magazine from the 1950s or something. You know, a bunch of fiction stories of soldiers doing manly mm-hmm. things. And no, she's actually a very respected journalist who's worked for other top journalistic outlets in Washington, D.C. So she is not somebody you can just dismiss and say, oh, yeah, okay, that's up. No, she's, she's a good journalist. And they SOF has. Um, issued FOIA requests to the government. The government's got about 17 days to respond now. But uh, according to her reporting, officials of the White House know who handled a packet of cocaine found inside the executive mansion and have confirmed that finding via fingerprint evidence, according to sources with direct knowledge of the investigation. Mm. We know who handled it, one security source said. We've known since last week. Two sources disclosed the name of the person who is believed to handle the packet Soldier of Fortune is withholding the name pending official confirmation. And on her Twitter feed, uh, Keating said, yeah, it's because, you know, process servers. We Mm -hmm. don't want to get sued. But if somebody Mm -hmm. comes forward and will confirm it publicly, but it's not Hunter Biden. Well, let me say this. Just because there are fingerprints on the bag doesn't not mean that person bought the cocaine or brought it to there. It could be someone who just innocently picked it up. Yeah, yeah. And left it in the cubby there. Yeah. Yeah. Or I was told to hold, my friend said to hold this for him. (laughs) (laughs) It's not mine, mom. I don't know how it got there. My friend just, yeah. (sighs) This guy came up and he's in the street and he said, here, hold this. Yeah. No. So this is, this is laughable. Yeah. Because. But the, the FOIA request should go through because they've closed the investigation. The only excuse they would have is if it's an open investigation, right. therefore we can't release any papers on it, but if they've closed it, they announced it. Mm-hmm. So this past Wednesday, Soldier Fortune filed formal FOIA requests with three agencies likeliest to know about the fingerprint results. What, the agencies are the Washington, D.C. Fire and Emergency Medical Services Department, Metropolitan Police Department, and the U.S. Secret Service. So we'll and see what Keystone happens. And the Keystone Cops. And the Keystone Cops, yeah. So we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks as to whether they get any answers, but I mean, this is just so ridiculous that they don't, we, we don't know. How, how could this be? Like, really? Come on. I mean. <laughs> Look, that's the answer to a lot of things in this world. We said it didn't happen, so yeah. go away. Who are you going to believe? Us or your lion eyes? Well, anyway. Nah. <sighs> and this, this kind of leads to uh, just the growing drumbeat of stories. There's a report out this week that uh, top Democrats are now say, saying privately, they know that Biden is not going to run for a second term. Well, uh, here's the thing. It doesn't really matter if he does. It doesn't really matter if he correct. does and wins. It doesn't matter because the Lord raises up leaders and he tears yep. them down. Yep. We are called to do our jobs. We are not going to save the lost at the ballot box. No, we, we still do it. I still vote. You oh, still absolutely. vote. Yes, we still absolutely. do that. And you do so as an informed voter. You do the best you can with that job. But that isn't our real job. Our mm-hmm. primary job is to lift up Jesus, crucified, risen, coming again. Amen. Amen. And that is the takeaway here. Mm-hmm. You know, the nations rage and imagine a vain thing, but he who sits in the heavens laughs and holds mm-hmm. them in derision. It is. So we pray that you're having a good day and that... Uh, at the end of all this stuff that you're not sitting there gritting your teeth, that you're smiling and you are thanking the Lord yeah. that you know him as savior and that, uh, you know, that, that you know what your job is. That's it. And that you don't live in an egg world. 
That's it. Aren't we glad? Just remember, the one who created the universe spoke everything into his existence is sitting in the heavens and laughing at those people who foolishly believe they're winning. Yeah. Yeah. No, he won. We've read the end of the book. Yes. And we're just waiting for justice to be carried out. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. So who is on VFTB tonight? Uh, Tonight, it is Iron and Myth. Oh! Yes, number we all 19. Wait for that one. Yes. Brian Gadawa, Pastor Doug Van Doren, Dr. Judd Burton. We talk about Christian horror. Oh, yeah. And don't forget Iron and Myth Tour in Israel, March of 2025. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're looking forward to that. That's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. 2025, big year. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Details at gilbertsinisrael.com or gilberthouse.org slash travel. Yep. But uh, yeah, VFTB. Dot net tomorrow night that will be uh, iron and myth and uh tomorrow don't forget to join us for uh, the gilbert house fellowship bible study we're back into psalms and uh, until then i'm Derek gilbert i'm sharon gilbert bye-bye everybody pid radio is an outreach of gilbert house ministries released under creative commons attribution non-commercial no derivatives 4.0 international license follow us online pidradio.com twitter at pid radio or by downloading our free app pidradio.com slash app or gilberthouse.org slash app join us each week for our bible study the gilbert house fellowship <laughs> <laughs>